it, it's a strange title. What is this novel about? Okay, well, There's No Story There by Inez Holden is indeed a strange title. It comes from a question that came towards the end of the book when a journalist was asked, why, why don't you write about this extraordinary place in the middle of England where thousands of people are making bombs? And she said, well, there's no story there. And it's a really intriguing question that the reader is faced with. It's a novel about a munitions factory during the Second World War, and there is no particular protagonist. There are about 10 or 11 lead characters. You hear about their stories, you hear their voices, and the reader sort of moves in and out of the activities of the factory, learning more about what's going on. And all the time, there's a rising sense of dread because the factory could go up at any minute. How does it relate to Blitz Writing? Well, Blitz Writing was Inez Holden's first book that we produced. Blitz Writing is a novella, Night Shift, and a diary. It was different at the time. Both were printed in 1914-42, and we put them together as one book. So that's a, a complex palimpsest of work about the Second World War. This novel came a year later, and it's a full-length text. We've also added some short stories at the end from her essays at the time. And the, the, the effect is to show more fully Inez Holden's grasp of what it was like working and writing about the Second World War as a woman, working amongst working-class people, not being part of the armed forces, and just what it was like living at the time. And it's just extraordinary. I don't think there's anything being published like this before. What will readers want to know about the reading experience, how the story is told and how the plot evolves? The plot, well there isn't really a plot, that's a strange thing. You're just, you start the day with the workers by going into the factory, you have to take off all your outer clothes, you've got to hand in your your cigarettes, your lighters, you have to change your shoes for soft-soled sneakers, you have to wear asbestos suits, you have to put face cream on your face in your hands or your exposed parts of your skin, which are supposed to protect you from an explosion. Once you got through that first part, the reader is very well aware, oh good Lord, this is a really strange environment. And then you get office politics coming in, and then you get real politics coming in, and you get a sense of the day-to-day detail of working in an extremely high pressure, but at the same time, very calm, very quiet environment, which is completely suffused with the physical explosive that they're all building, they're building bombs, and also the sense of no one naturally knows what's going to happen. Is this going to be a timeless, lasting forever kind of experience, or is this all going to end really quite soon? It, it's, it's very tense, but it's just addictive. It's a remarkable work. There are also three short stories in this edition. What, why are they included? We put the short stories in because they say a great deal about what it was like living in London during the war as a civilian. The longest one is called Musical Chairman and it's narrated by a clerk at the Ministry of Works who is working as a secretary for a morning while a chairman of the board hears people's cases when they come to explain why they should not be called up for military service or why they should not be called up for labour service. Um, So you get lots and lots of vignettes of individual cases and you get a sense of what it must be like living and working and having to wrestle with all the really complicated new regulations and the new categories people were in. Um, and it's it's just like eavesdropping. It's like eavesdropping during um, a court's progress and it's a remarkable picture. There's a very, very short vignette in addition, um, about three pages long, of a conversation between five or six soldiers on a train which is so arresting and so immediate we felt it had to be included. It's a very very rare instance of Holden writing about the military and finally there's a much more personal memoir of hers which isn't very long it's about what it was like living on the floor below a woman who had taken in German refugees and one refugee was interned and it was her efforts to get the man out of the internment camp in Britain and to find him a doctor because he had TB, and then just the strange nuances and and the dialogue between these the refugees living in London, knowing that they're aliens, 
knowing that they're safe, but for how long? The important thing about these works by Holden is that nobody at the time knew when the war was going to end. Hitler could have been invading. And so the sense of impermanence and uncertainty and just dogged getting on with it because there was no choice. You had to live this life and just work with it as best you could. 